Breaking news. Ladies and gentlemen, my timeline on Twitter absolutely blew up this morning, and all I saw trending was Pokemon Sun and Moon episode 139. And I'm here to report to you today that after 7 regions in 22 years and over 1,000 episodes, Ash Ketchum has finally won a Pokemon League, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, yes, he is the Alola League champion. Okay, now, it would not be fair to drop this news without first highlighting where he started from. But before we get into that, I need you to surpass your limits and go plus ultra and smash that subscribe button for more news and reviews, ladies and gentlemen. And without further ado, let's get into it. Now, Ash had humbled beginnings, right? It's good to lose sometimes because it's a learning experience. Everybody can agree to this. If you always win, then you never really know what it feels like to lose and you never know how to overcome that in the future. So when he started off... And when he went to the Kanto League Championship, he got top 16, right? You know, it's a very humbling experience. It's your first league, but you learn and you move on. In the Johto League, he got top 8. In the Hoenn League, top 8. Sinnoh League, he improved. He got top 4. I personally believe his best performance was in the Sinnoh League and in the Kalos League, all right? But after the Sinnoh League and got top 4, he moved on to the Unova League and he got top 8. A lot of people did not like how he lost in Unova. A lot of people say that he should have won Unova because he he was just so uniform. You know what I mean? Like, he was very uniform. If he didn't have to go up against a Darkrai and a Latios, I, I'm fairly confident he would have progressed much further. Would he have won? I don't know, but a lot of people say he would have won. That was a hell of a performance that he put on in that region. In Kalos region, he was the runner-up, which means he got second place. And people, it, that... that fight left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. People really had a problem with the writing of that episode and how it ended. Um, people didn't like the fact that a, a, a one-hit KO move was used on him by the Bisharp, and people don't like the fact that Greninja lost against a Charizard when he's a water type. But nonetheless, the league after that, in the Alola region, he is the champion. Now, I watched episode 139, Raw, and if you don't know what that means, that means there are no subtitles. The episode dropped today, so there were no subtitles. But thank God the moves that they used are in English. Otherwise, I would not have been able to keep up with it. Now, it was Ash Lycanroc versus some other dudes Lycanroc, who I don't know the name of. And to be honest with you, I stopped keeping up with Pokemon after Generation 4. After that, I only would tune in for the, the, uh, the Pokemon League and to see how far Ash would get through. I didn't watch the Alola League or Pokemon Sun and Moon at all, but this warranted a discussion because where does it go after this? He is now a Pokemon champion. So what does that mean? That means I assume, just like every other Pokemon champion, you have to stay in your region in case challengers challenge you or in case an Elite Four challenges you. You see what I'm saying? Like, you can't just up and leave. Yes, Cynthia does travel, but she is not gone for too long. You understand what I'm saying? And then I also know that we haven't really seen this happen before, but there are instances where you have um, trainers who have made it through the Elite Four who earn the right to challenge the champion of that region. So there are stipulations how long a champion can be gone. <clears throat> but it's undeniable that if Ash is allowed to go further and challenge more regions and stuff like that like with the Galar region right now we know that's the next Pokemon generation that's coming to the Nintendo Switch whatever region they follow in the Pokemon games is the region that they're going to follow in the anime as well now with him being champion I assume and I would speculate he has to stay there which means it, the anime is now opening up an opportunity for a new main protagonist to come along and come through now instantly when I had this thought there's really only one other person I really cared enough to watch them go through. And that is Alan from Pokemon X, Y, and Z. He went around to all these different trainers and Elite Four members and Pokemon gym leaders. And he wanted to fight all of the Mega Evolutions. But then I remembered he won, he won the Kalos League. So technically he's a champion as well. So there really isn't an old protagonist I could think of to take Ash's place, which means that we're going to get an entirely new Pokemon champion. I'm sorry, not a Pokemon champion. We're going to get an entirely new Pokemon protagonist that's going to kick off the Galar region. I assume. That's what I would prefer. And maybe it's just me, 
and Game Freak, Nintendo, Pokemon, y'all don't really have to listen to me. I would like it, but I would like to see multiple trainers, Pokemon trainers, travel together. And I would like to see them battle different gyms, like more than eight gyms. That's me personally, because we know from the very first generation, Gary, when he opened up his, uh, his Pokemon, you know, badge pouch, he had 10 badges. Well, what does that mean? That means that there are more than eight gyms per region. That only makes sense. Otherwise, you only have eight, eight opportunities. I mean, yes, that would make it more competitive, but if you really think about it, everybody who Ash fights in the league, he should have seen at some point along the way more than one which means there are multiple multiple gems within a region how many i don't know at the very least 10 that's my thoughts on really the first which leads into my second thing that i want to touch on because it's the only other option of pokemon that i really want to see it really is and that's um pokemon mystery dungeons and maybe it's just me but pokemon mystery dungeons is the best-selling pokemon spin-off game for the nintendo ds all right it's had its own animated series and it's had its own manga run you can't tell me when you saw pokemon mystery dungeons it, it, for me it was the anime and he wakes up and he was a human that was transformed into a squirtle and then he was a human that was transformed into a growth file two 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 different people they're not the same people two different people you had Pokemon Red Rescue Team and Blue Rescue Team. And you have Pokemon Explorers of Time and Darkness. And you also have Pokemon Explorers of uh, Sky. Arguably the best storyline of any Pokemon game ever. And please, if you feel the need, at me. Because up until Pokemon X and Y, we never truly had a Pokemon storyline, right? I mean, and I mean outside of, oh, you have um, the evil organization and their scheme. No, I mean a true story. X and Y gave you a true storyline with cutscenes and all that stuff, but Pokemon Explorers of Time and Darkness did it first, and they did it better. There has been a Pokemon Mystery Dungeons all the way through 2016, well, 2015 if I'm not mistaken, or the 3DS. We're going to see if they're going to give us uh, a Pokemon Mystery Dungeons for the Nintendo Switch, which I think would be amazing. We had a dungeon crawler for the Nintendo Switch. Upgraded graphic, more Pokemon, better moves. I mean, honestly, like, think about it. Like, if you woke up tomorrow and you were your favorite Pokemon, uh, and you woke up, say, like, a, a Trapinch or something, in a Pokemon world, you don't know how you got there, and some Charmander walks up to you and says, hey, we got a mission, let's go hold the fuck on who the fuck are you where the fuck are we how the fuck did this happen and no but those are just some of my thoughts let me know what your reaction was when you found out the news that ash was the alola champion i'm gonna be honest with you i thought it was a troll i thought it was all made up it was all fake news this is just uh, a screenshot, but no, I went to Twitter, uh, they, was like, this is the episode, I watched the episode, I was like, wow, this man actually did it, now, I think it was a lot of plot, because I feel as though they are moving away from Ash, that's really the only reason, like, that's the only reason, you're giving up the face of your series, Ash and Pikachu, you're giving that up, well, they, I mean, they, they might not be, Let, let's be frank, they might not be, because we don't know, but with him winning and becoming a champion, the role of that champion is to stay in that region for challengers in the Elite Four. The Elite Four can challenge, I don't know what the protocol is, but they can challenge the champion to, I assume, take their title. I don't know if they swap places, like if uh, if Cynthia lost to one of her Elite Four members, does Cynthia become an Elite Four member and that Elite Four member who won takes her place? I don't know. Uh, we've We've never really seen a full Elite Four challenge go through with the champion we saw like spurts of it here in um Sinnoh with Cynthia but I mean that's about it but I'm not going to drag this video on any longer than what it needs to be um if you're new subscribe comment how you felt and how you reacted when you found out that Ash finally after 22 years in seven regions and over a thousand episodes won a championship um and he didn't win it with Pikachu surprisingly enough but comment down below how you felt do you think it was BS? Do you think it was a fair win? I personally think Ash's Lycanroc should have been knocked clean out. I mean, it got hit with a super effective move at least four or five times. I mean, it, it should have been knocked out. Uh, and if I got this translation right, the antagonist Lycanroc used counter. And then Ash told his Lycanroc, use counter to counter his counter. 
I was like, w- w- counter his count, bruh. If that's the case, if I was battling Ash and I heard that, I'd be like, like and rock, counter his counter. That's gonna counter your counter, and we would just kept going back and forth between a stalling counter off. Okay, but look. That's all I got for you today. Like, comment, share, subscribe, all that fancy stuff. And like always, keep it safe, wrap it tight, I'm out. <laughs> Switching sides. Cyber attack. Retrieve the device. Setting Claymore! Request recon flyover! Falcon 301 route for personal radar coverage. Personal radar destroyed. We've lost coverage. Flash out! Let's go. I can't die yet. I'm You're good to go. go. Get back in there. We have arms the EMP. Defend it. Cyber attack. Retrieve the device. Grenade out! On your feet, let's go! Move! Better. Get up! I've got you! Get up! I've got you! I'm up! Go! Reloading! You okay? I'm You're good to go. go. Get back in there. Reloading. We're moving. Get up. <laughs> Setting Claymore. Good. Now go. Dumbass. Stay focused. No mistakes. This round is ours. I repeat, but
killing themselves. Cyber attack. Retrieve the device. Secured.